Max is waiting patiently, so. Sorry, Max. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want all the other stuff on. I know, of course not, yeah. <laughs> all right, good. Um, so I distributed the uh, minutes from the last meeting, uh, unfortunately, just last night. Um, did everybody get, get a chance I'm to reading read? it now. I had, I read through them. You must have been up late. I have a copy if somebody didn't get a chance. Hey, Max, you it. called it in the minutes. <laughs> Max believes. Oh. <laughs> he called it. That's the tip. Was yeah, oh. that was Max. He called it. What's he get, pizza? <laughs> no, he wants to go back to Morris' sauerkraut. Oh, well, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. Good job. Good, good job, Max. That's my place. I take yeah. Chat. We take a long place. ride yeah. around the wilds of Waldemar, and then we end up at Morse's. Mm -hmm. He wants he wants to be me someday. So uh, I yeah. think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hopefully, better right. than me. <laughs> come out. Come on my heels. Come on. Is now doing better than you, Julie. Oh, oh. see, he's such a well-trained boy. Oh. <laughs> well, if he doesn't, if he doesn't give hugs, then he's. Yeah. Gives he gives hugs. He gives hugs. Max does gives he? hugs. Oh, yes, yeah. he does. <clears throat> Max is a. Yeah. I actually think that Max's career in municipal government. We need more young men like him and mm. women. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. His ears are burning. Yeah. They are. It will explode the future. Okay, that's good. Okay. Which way do you want to move away? <laughs> My dad is at home now, and I have just told him we would rest here. Yeah. Five days a week out of our regular rate. It smells oh, like boy. caffeine cigarettes, but that's what makes it cheap. <laughs> so my son-in-law's a contractor. Oh, so right, yeah. So that that should be an issue. We bought this one needs a lot of work, and we, we sold our house so. in a week. So Selling that boat is a whole big issue. Yeah, it's got the like, three-cylinder yeah. Yamaha. One cylinder. Oh, oh, seven horse. Seven horse. Yeah. Seven yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, yeah. Give me four and a half knots with no current. My wife says, you know, just get used to stuff. What year was it? 86. I had a 73 CNC. There was a house for sale down the end of our street. 4,500. Cabin. Somebody's foolish. I think it's Annie yeah. Hawes. I think it might be. What's her last name? We have a boat broker down in for a while Annie there, and her husband named yeah. Gray. Oh, Annie Gray. Appreciate oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's she I grew up with her, by the way. She, that's oh. who I bought my... Right. Uh, Catalina for him. Right. Well, anyway, I know I grew up with them in Westport. Texas, Expensive right? in Texas, but anyway, yeah. she came up and saw the thing and told me, oh, "Way on the price. Bad. That's why I can't sell it." And she listed it for a year for fourteen thousand and couldn't sell it either. So <laughs> we good? Yeah, we're good. Prices are good. All right. Somebody want to make a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept. Yes. Second. Second. By John. All in favor? I'll look it. All right. Thank you, Max. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I've just got a couple of things. One is we are going to need new members. <laughs> and so uh, I would ask <coughs> any of you, if you know of someone that would be interested in joining the Economic <laughs> Development Committee, to um, please ask them and let them know that we're here. And The lady who runs the gymnastics. Stacy. Stacy. Stacy's moving her business to Denver Scott. Denver Scott. Newcastle, Denver Scott. Okay, that's right. She was in my office yesterday. <coughs> in July. She she's moving over. She's she not, not getting here. the business. <coughs> she got is she still gonna live here? She doesn't live here. She lives in Jefferson. Oh, why mm -hmm. Are we talking about the same one? Stacy Gogolinski. Studio three. bottom floor studio. No. Three. Oh okay. we're not talking about the same person at all. Who, Who are you talking about? <laughs> 
the lady who runs the gymnastics. Oh, oh you mean over by the high school? By the high school. Okay, okay. that'll work. She's good. Yeah, she yeah. came in yesterday. She's very excited. Yeah. She's good, too. I'm like, what? She's <laughs> sorry. That had a special permit requirement to add on to the building about a year ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. 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 She's, she used to be at the one. She, she, well, she wanted to be more involved in the WBA, <laughs> you got, but you guys meet at night. So I was like, well, we have the EBC. They meet in the morning, so you might want to reach out to her. That would be really good if somebody else other than me could do it since we yep. had the conference. I will, I, I will be happy to reach out to her. She has a good business. That would be great. And also, um, we, we probably ought to think at – not today, but at some point in the future, whether a Friday morning meeting at 8 a.m. is uh, the best time to attract new members, especially if you want to get people who are working in town or have real jobs. Most of us either own our business or are retired, and uh, Friday 8 a.m. isn't working hours, or we can make our own working hours, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so that, that puts us at a disadvantage in terms of getting new young people um, Onto the committee. Is, so I think. Is there any time in the normal eight hour day that does work? I think you'd have to do either like an evening or like a 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. meeting, something like that. You could do both. What? Do a morning meeting and then alternate it. That was one of that lady's suggestions. Every other month? Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. That's what she was saying. Like maybe the WBA could alternate on occasion. Like every fourth meeting, have a morning meeting, so that the people who can't come at night whose business, because like she's doing gymnastics at night. Yeah. She mentioned that, but maybe that would be something. But you guys are gonna have a lot more work, so. Yeah. So we need people. We need people. Yeah. We I, we can put that out there on um, our social media page, it's and wait till you see our new website. <laughs> As, oh, as Ron really? Phillips said, he doesn't want to be on this on that committee. I mean, Ron I'm, Phillips is a tremendous. I've, I've been out. I had breakfast with Ron yesterday to try to, and you know, go over all the stuff he's working he's on. Got a and, lot of stuff. And he's obviously, involved. I'm always pitching. We need you to join. Are you going to be here tomorrow? And he, his view is that he may eventually join, but right now he wants to be kind of arm's length from mm -hmm. the politics of the thing sure. because he's involved in so many, um, you know, projects. And uh, you know, I kind of respect that. I guess sure. that makes sense. But he would be terrific mm. to have on the committee. I think we need a realtor. Mm. Mm. I think I think even it's a if really it's interesting idea. That's a great idea actually. I would ask one uh, well, Richard yeah. is not here on Fridays. If we didn't meet on Fridays, Richard could just join us as part of his yeah, world. Sure. But um, if not, I would ask um, Scott, maybe Scott Lash. Scott, Scott Lash is really into the whole, um, he has a great interest. He lives in town. He has a young child. So that's perfect. Different perspective. Yeah, yeah. Be. different yeah. perspective. And he's been involved in town government in the past. Mm -hmm. He's been, he was the on EMS the EMS director of Booth Bank. Yeah. Yep, he was on the complaint committee in the early yeah. days. That's a great idea. Good. Um... So we have exciting news that we think the uh, library bookstore will be opening uh, for the July 4th long weekend. Great. I think July wow. 1's uh, soft okay. opening, yeah. Yep. yep. Um, soft opening? Soft yeah. opening. We I don't have it. a name for it yet, and we're still... Why don't you have a... But that should be a contest. Well, it is. <laughs> we're, we're, we've got a jar out in the <laughs> library lobby. And oh, that is amazing. So it, um, what's the address? Oh. 25, 25 Friendship Street. 25 Friendship Street. So it's a nice spot. We'll have the, the, we're renting the space, but they're going to allow us to put a sign, you know, one of those neat signs out front. And uh, we've, got, we've got tons of um, bookcases coming in. Thank you. For lots Very of people. Much. And tons of books and uh, a lot of CDs and uh, DVDs. Oh, that's cool. And it's going to be oh, too. I, do you need more? <laughs> <laughs> We do. <laughs> pick and we cat picks and chooses. She picks and chooses, though. We don't take. You can't, can't just dump all it. your. Like you know, she went through Kay's books and picked maybe, I don't know, five hundred or so out of, probably two thousand, or more. So she's picky about. She, she Even wants her CDs. I have a good country music collection of CDs. Ooh. Hang on. She <laughs> wants to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah, CDs would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dollar a piece boom. So anyway, so um, so that's that's we're really excited about that. With the 
the library did have a clam festival. We didn't clam call spectacular. it spectacular. Spectacular. With Madama clams. <clears throat> Finally, we actually incorporated our own clams into something we did. We ended up serving, I think, around 75 people. Yeah. Um, it, it was very, I think next year it'll be even better. Um, but it, it, and thanks, thanks for those who came. Yeah, we came. We brought and, a baby. Uh, <laughs> Are you thinking perhaps to have things for people who don't like clams? Just curious. Well, it's it's actually a clam spectacular. Yeah. The focus was on the Madama clams, so uh, yeah. there, we had beer though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clam Cold beer. No, nope, don't had do corn. Clams. Had corn. Oh. <laughs> or, or, we actually thought about all kinds kinds of things, but well, I know uh, it's at the hard. end of the day, we kept it simple: clam yeah. chowder, uh, steamers, and uh, you know, kind yeah. of a simple. You know, Mainer kind of dinner, and we we didn't think about hamburgers or anything else. No. What I we'll know. try to do is have a contest: who has the best clam chowder recipe? Mm. And it didn't quite it pull just, off this year. Wait, there were so many issues. <laughs> there were so many issues. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. The, yeah. But we started somewhere, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, I, mean, I just think it was a real success. We, I, I was I, I was honestly surprised how many people came. <laughs> were you? Yeah, I was. I, I thought it was great. This sounds like clam snobbery to me. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. We, when you we, compare us to Yarmouth, we are snobs. <laughs> well, I was going a different direction with oh, that. I'm sorry. Um, there's a very good chance that within a year we will have oysters, oysters. and eels yeah. available oh, growing. Shelf is spectacular. Well, eels yeah. don't have yeah. shells, but close. Yeah. Now these are little baby eels you can swallow alive and have them tickle your tongue. Ew. You know what would work really well? No, they're going to be growing them out. This is they do in you know Japan, what? you know. Next year <laughs> would work really well is I think if the library teams with the Waldebro Day Friday night dance. Because mm. that live band was really good and we didn't have near enough people that we should have had at that dance because uh -huh. that was a really, really good live band. I mean, they could play from the 50s up to the current stuff. They were an excellent live band. What, what are the hours for that? Normally 7.30 to 11, but if you had your clam stacular Before. beforehand. That's interesting. And yeah. then do the dance, you're going to get more people, I bet, and they're going to get more people, and there's live music, and it's it's a rocking night. You BYOB, and people are dancing, eating clams, you're serving. Yeah. It, it, you, you had a gate charge at that dance of what? $5. Five dollars. Oh. So we could just roll that right in. <clears throat> Throw in some oysters and a lobster or two, and you got yourself a it really is a, good night. Yeah, it's a fundraiser for the library. Right. Does yeah. that cause problems? No. Why would it? I, just, I would think you would I'm want to do that. Just asking the question. That's that. all. Yeah, just want to make sure. So we that. charged fifteen dollars for the for entry for the meal, and then five dollars for beer, for a glass of beer. Um, but you know, maybe we you could charge twenty dollars includes entry to the dance or something like that. Uh, yeah. You get a lot of fried clams for fifteen dollars. Did I just hear? You got uh, one and a half dozen. They weren't oh, fried. They were steamers. steamers. Well, you oh, could do steamers, steamers this steamers. time. Yeah. You could do fried because you've That's got active shucking. So yeah, it opens up. Fried is a little harder to do. Yeah, because and you have it's to not do them. not healthy either. And you have to do them. But people like them. Yeah. <laughs> True. And you know what you could do is is you could probably hire somebody who has a good fry later. What if they um, right? Because they what if they had a, a truck or something outside, outside that they could do the frying outside? Right. So so th those That's are all really good ideas. So, but yeah. but they're for the library. <laughs> yeah, so, right. we're, but, so we're uh, but it's a fundraising. So what we try to do is minimize. So we we basically do all the cooking. We steam. And we bring else. our steamers. Yeah. We bring. So we're paying, the trustees are paying essentially for everything. And so there isn't a lot of, you know, we pay, I think we had to pay for the clams and we had to buy one keg of beer, but everything else is donated by the trustees. So when you start bringing in trucks and then that makes it, makes the equation a little more complicated. And you might have a better night, but not make, not make as much money. And that's. I think you would find that people would help you and donate, I bet you. Donate the truck. The nice thing about a dance is you can have you could have donations through the, now. you have donations through the night. Yeah. You, could, you could pass yeah. the hat, you know. There's ways it to would be a really cool night. Yeah. Yeah. Would, yeah. You might have to tie Bob in his chair, but I what about uh, a couple of years ago we were talking, I think Captain was here, about how different fried clam recipes are. 
and you could, oh, yeah. you could have a designer fried clam contest or, uh, and, and call it clam snobbery. <laughs> I love, I love clam yeah. snobbery. Elevate, oh, that's elevate great. the whole thing to oh, it. Yeah. I, I, I think fight. that's great. Clam that snobbery. If I jump out of my chair, it's out of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we really are. We really are. Right. I mean, you, I went to the Beaches Conference, which is New Hampshire, Maine, a little bit of Massachusetts. And I mean, we were, the Madomic was a, well, for a couple of reasons, was a item of discussion. Did the seaweed industry seaweed come up? Seaweed industry came up, yes. I actually didn't get to the rockweed, but I stayed for the land, the lawyer. Oh, yeah. Who? Remember? Uh, Chow. Amy Chow. Okay, yeah. Do you know her? Not well, but I know of her. She's our town attorney. Oh. So they were talking about the decisions and what probably will happen, and there is no law. It's just case law that they have. Ah. We, we've been involved in I know you've been peripheral involved conversations in that. trying to figure out what are they actually going to do. So, so she, she, they were talking about how this changes things and how 20, it was like the anniversary of 25 years ago, a different case yeah. that brought up rights of the, the landowners. And it was an interesting perception of, you know, when a landowner is going to exert their right. If they're going to do that, there's also a taxation issue that comes up then. Right. Yeah. 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 Taxation. You mentioned that. Well, the, yeah. There's, there's the, a lot. Yeah. And surveys. The and moment surveys. you define yeah. the rule the way that ruling is, you have to, you have to delineate where right. mean yeah. low water is because the seaweed beyond it's public. I left my. <laughs> I left that meeting with the impression of it, the laws. The laws as always has been, but this is just a case that's hanging out there. That's case law. That if somebody yeah. wants to sue. They can use that as an argument. Aside from that, there's really no teaching. Just like the stone walls on my property, two rods apart. Oh, let's not get. <laughs> well, anyway, there. But it, it is was a, interesting. It is for, it's true, though. But we we are we are pretty getting to be pretty. How well did we known get for from, from clams and libraries to this? I'm just wondering. <laughs> because we're getting to be cool. Okay. <laughs> we're talking about the fun stuff. Because yeah, we're they, apparently clam snobs. Yeah, but could we put this on the agenda for one of our meetings and really talk about clam it? snobbery? Sounds no, 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 no. The, no, the, the, the seaweed and issue. Well, the, the, the taxation issue. issue. And the taxation issue. I would love issue. to have people thinking about, oh, really? Tax? Oh, geez. And the IRS is going to know I sold seaweed to these people? <clears throat> That'd be a good topic well, it's for the, assessors. It's the land, it's the land taxation. Yeah. Ooh. Right now, there's... And the resource, because... It, it would be impossible to delineate the mean low watermark without a very deliberate surveying effort. Yeah. The moment you've got those two pins out there in the mud, then there's a, a defined boundary that has an acreage within it. And that's valid. And that's the that's first valid. time that ever would have been possible. Okay. And with rising sea levels... It's going to move. It's going to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and those pins will be gone in what? Ten minutes. <laughs> About First sandbars, they move all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 good point. Yeah, <laughs> and and again, I don't think you can put twelve foot pins in the corners of your property. That's right. Or somebody with a Boston wheeler is going to be really unhappy. That's right. Yeah. It's <laughs> funny. Jeez. It's interesting, but anyway, so we are becoming a topic. I think that's a good. Idea. Is that worthy of a top? A, a the seaweed legal thing. It would be more. It would be more about. How does the town respond to the potential that there's a valuation issue on intertidal zones? As soon as you can control it and tell me not to harvest seaweed there, it seems like there's a burden for that. Maybe Daryl could come to the meeting and talk to us about assessing issues. The, the assessors have a group that they, they have timely topics. This would be something that... Yeah. We can talk to Dave about that. But is that part of this or is that part of that? I think that's part of that. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more of a select board. Yeah, I don't think it's... I mean, it does it impact an economic as economically. But the other seaweed factory, and I probably shouldn't do this on camera, but the other seaweed company is going to be getting kicked right in the stomach on this if someone makes an issue out of it. Mm -hmm. we, we have relationships and a different level of harvesting than they do. So uh, Ocean Organics should weather this pretty well. But if, if we were dehydrating yeah. seaweed where you need orders of magnitude greater quantities mm -hmm. and when you have a mechanical harvester that attracts attention, uh, bad attention, even though it's a good way to harvest. Um, yeah, the other, economic development-wise, the other yeah, seaweed factory is, is going to maybe be um, scratching its head seriously. Mm. 
I don't know that. I shouldn't have said it, but uh, if I would project what I think their situation is. Anyway, I don't know how you want to agenda eight that, but. Let me percolate. Someone will think of something. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I mean, we could, we could add it to next month and, and have a conversation, see if there's a recommendation that we would make to the town or to, to the select board, I guess. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I would, I, that, the role I could see us playing. Is it, the, and with the, maybe with the rationale that from an economic development standpoint, frankly, I would like to see whatever leverage the town has go towards settling this back the way it used to be. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, that's a very conniving sort of self-serving position, but it's, well, it's crazy that a Canadian company did a bad job of defending my right to harvest seaweed. Canadian. <laughs> it, it's that simple. All right. A lot of dollars involved when you get an attorney in the mix of oh, two or God. three. From Portland. I was on the 13th floor of Preddy Flaherty, whatever it is. All right, and the last thing I have is uh, the TIF passed. Hooray. Hooray. Yeah, good. Um, <coughs> but now what? So where are we at? We have to send the formal uh, application in to DCD, which should take anywhere from 60 to 120 days. To, to How long does it take to complete that? Whatever it is. Oh, it should take us about a week. So, so the designating the land and stuff like that? Oh, no, we have all that. It's just some figures that uh, Gerald has to complete. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the, the fact that they, the latest update on the eel growing out business looks like it's maybe July, August groundbreaking. So yep. all that will qualify. That's easily. right. Yep. Oh, that's great. Yep. Good. Terrific. All right. That's uh, everything I have. So that takes us. So we don't need. EDC, you don't no. need our. Yeah, we're. we're this good. is just going right. to get into. Julie, town update. State. Okay, I have some exciting news. <laughs> um, one big thing is we're going to be have a Waldboro tidings page that I will write first one. every oh, week. That was a good column, Julie. Yeah. It's it was short. It was sweet. good. <laughs> um, I'm going to have more time now that I know I'm doing this on a regular basis. It's weekly. It's weekly. It's a, so a, my goal a is narrative update. I didn't. It's narrative. It's it's it, they used it's to have it in the paper a long time ago <clears throat> in Lincoln County News, um, Waldboro Tidings. Yeah. Okay. Good. So um, J W and I worked out that I'll do one once a week, and I'm going to try to make it everything good about Waldboro and <laughs> highlight our good things. Um, but then there's going to be times where you know you're going to have to throw a serious one in, like about drugs and poverty and things like that. But um, so I'm excited about that. Um, yesterday, Tanya and I, um, if you haven't met Tanya, she is my new right arm, and she's amazing. We had a demonstration of a new website that will be amazing if I can afford it. Um, mm -hmm. It will have the ability for people to sign up for emails and text messages so if we have an emergency alert it'll automatically go out to everybody um, I personally think it would be a great way if people want to sign up for town events um, that you can go on and pick what you want to sign up for just emergency notifications or notifications of public celebrations and things like that because then everybody could get a text about hey it's paint the town right yep so and right. that's included in this Wow. And, um, That'd be terrific. Yeah. It will be, we can change the pictures, we can have economic development can have their whole page. It's very simple to use. We're very excited about it. I just have to, on Tuesday night, convince the select board to let me have a little bit more money. So <laughs> um, that's exciting. And the other thing that I think that EDC has to start getting involved with is um, we had our community forum and the results of that are done and they went out. We're gonna have another one probably at the beginning of August, but we're at the point where we seriously have to start talking about the five major topics that came out of this. And that was poverty, substance abuse, whether it be drugs or alcohol, housing needs, transportation needs, food insecurity, food insecurity and I'm gonna add the blanket one, which was all over everything is communication and how we communicate what we're doing to the town because there's a lot of people doing a lot of things and nobody knows what the other hand's doing. Um, so those first two items that I went over should help with that to some extent. So, but 
I do think that now we really have to start delving into how we're going to address these things. Um, and to me, um, perhaps the most important thing from an economic standpoint, in my view, in this town is we're never going to be as successful as we need to be and attract what we want to do unless we address some of the serious issues we have. And we, we, we have to, I'm not saying highlight them, but we have to deal with them in a way that is thoughtful <coughs> and provide services to everybody. So this isn't just, uh, you know, if, if we're going to pursue a building, which I am hopeful um, we will, to put it down, and that would be a discussion of where to put it, but that would house a medical arts building, um, a community center, Head Start, Early Start, but a true community, community building. building that the town has some way of getting revenue out of um, through rentals or something like that. Who, who would own the building? I'm, I don't know what that looks like, but that's where I think personally you, I think this board in particular is poised to do more with this than any of my other boards. Um, but I think it's a, there's so many moving parts and that's just one piece of it. I mean, if you look at what we're, what's happening now in Waldeboro, just take that where we're finally starting to work together. So our social services are getting in order over here. You've got the Waldo Theater over here. You've got the new businesses coming in. You've got potential development at AD Gray. Think about it like this. If we remove the head, if we move Head Start to a, a, a better building, a new building that they can then be tenants in, that frees up Friendship School. Imagine what you could, some, a developer, if they're going to do 80 gray, what a developer or similar thing could happen at Friendship School. So you're, you're just talking about how it's all intertwined. Do, and the, um, these problems, the five, I think probably any town anywhere might have the same five. Um, some it's easier for, some it isn't. Uh, I think back when I was on the school board many, several decades ago, and I was always struck by how often we were reinventing sliced bread. Um, mm -hmm. Are there other towns that uh, we can improve upon their approach, or do we do we lead the other towns? We in? don't lead. We follow on this one. Cause so we got yeah. models Booth we can... Bay, the Booth Bay Regional <laughs> BRCRC <laughs> um, has really been the model that I'd like to... To, to uh, follow. Um, you it's you a, call it a what? A C? BRCRC, Booth Bay Region Community, Community Recreation Re Re No. God love acronyms. I don't remember. Acronyms. She's the worst, aren't they? What was BRCRC. Um, but they're a nonprofit mm. that started. It's a little, our model might be a little bit different in that the town might have to start at first, but they, they have community navigators. So if somebody comes in the office in need, um, they're given, assigned to an, a, nav a navigator who then ascertains what type of services they need and how to get them. And um, I'll just give you a quick story. We had a family here after the forum came to us um, that never had been for help, and I am in awe of what is out there that we didn't know about. Hmm. And that's not any fault of our own, but just what we didn't know, what we didn't know, you know. I, I have to leave for another meeting, but I'm just gonna leave with one thing, and that is, um, why don't we should probably change the name of this committee to Economic and Community Development, probably be more reflective of the yeah, direction. Can we, can we say and growth instead of development? Yeah, economic, yeah, but add the word community because that's what we're talking about yeah. here too. And the two, you, there's, there's both sides of the same thing. Right. By doing that, it, it, it makes, at least for me, it makes it easier to say, hey, this is this is right in our add wheelhouse. Yeah. That's in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it, it has to be because, I, I mean, I think it needs to be a broader base than just the select board um, looking at this too. I, I think it, it fits here is yeah. how do we proceed and, and at some point, the Recreation Committee, and I, 
that's another yeah. committee that needs a different name because yeah. um, it's not just about recreation. It's about and I wellness. think what we found out through this forum was it was just not about people just don't want a place to go play bocce ball. Right. You know. Right. There's life skills that need to be taught and yeah. learned and, and things like that. So, are there towns that have <coughs> that have um, implemented good programs that work that we could go visit as a committee? Oh, we, we could. could. The BRCRC would love to have you. So that's how, I think that's how you start. You go and see yeah. mm -hmm. see it in in action. That's well, a great idea. Yeah, and there's a lot and, of ownership. Oh, I'm glad he said that. that. Mm -hmm. You know, for the town to choose it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, we can do. Free I can do. I can see the lights. Make that happen, and, and <laughs> you will love it. Sure the next thing. It will. I will tell you. Like tell you like will village. spend five minutes with these people, <laughs> and you will be amazed at what they have done, and what they do. That changes people's lives. It's it's in most. I got to tell you, it's the most incredible thing you'll. I I spent. An hour and a half with the, the one founder, and uh, you know she's in her 80s and just a little Spitfire going on doing all <laughs> kinds of th I mean, the stuff that they do just for the school when they do their backpack program to start school and everybody needs to go buy their kids things. They yeah, do it great. in a way that is huge. They have all these companies come in that have donated things. They offer haircuts the day of wow. this for wow. the kids to go back to school for free. Any child. There's nothing based on need. Every kid is treated the same. They all get the same backpack. They all get what they need in it. Um, but there are people there to cut their hair, uh, give the girls manicures, just and it's all donated, uh, all awesome. donated things. And that's kind of what we're going to try to do here in so, August. So when I, I had breakfast with Ron yesterday, and one of the things we talked about, we we're talking about we're all we're both involved in all these different charity organizations through town. My wife's involved, you know, we're in, She's your wife's involved. Henry, yeah, yeah, we're, thank you. And, and Ron said, you know, what's interesting is we have all these kind of like individual little groups. And not kind, one giant one. And not one giant, or even some kind of way to connect them so that they have a common cause. So, you know, the food, ba food pantry does what it does all on its own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the library trustees do what they do all on their own, trying to raise money and and we have an example of cooperating with another nonprofit. We right, do sitting right in front of us right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's I think the result of of Ron's seeing that picture and Julie too. We've talked about this. Yeah. So it it, it percolates down into people's we had the ideas. Same, I love this idea. We yeah. had the same, and I when we originally sat down over at Broad Bay. I had given Ron and everybody a model where I came from. We were all competing for the same money. Yeah. Everybody was. Yeah, crazy. And what we finally decided was we're not going to compete anymore because it's going to take people 10 years. We put everything on a board that had to be done. And if everybody kept that same level, level of funding, it would have taken 10 years to accomplish one thing. Yeah. And instead, now, every year, we were accomplishing one thing and more was getting done because all the resources. So what has to go right. first? The church needs a steeple. Waldo has to open. This needs to be done. What's the priority? Okay, so this year the money we fundraise will go to these organizations. And it, it did make it much easier. And that way, literally, not everybody, because businesses get tired of contributing too. A little bit everywhere. Right. Yeah. It's, it was the businesses found it so much more palatable to have to write one check to the, it was, uh, I forget what we called it now, but it was the, like a foundation, like it a, was the FHF, yeah. you know, the Fairhaven Foundation. And yeah, it all went into that. But these are kitty. capital projects you're talking about, aren't they? They were large projects. Yeah. yeah. So like if you need, but, I mean, but some large. Some of us need to raise money for operating. Right? Well, but, 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 yeah. but, but, but no, we I'm also did that too. I mean, sometimes yeah. you did do that too. Because the little leagues weren't so much capital as it was operating expenses too. Right. But well, they knew, like, so every year, if you knew you needed to raise this much for operating, you know, that was kind of a set thing. Um, but when it came to capital projects, we really did do a good job planning. And you've got grant leverage, more, a lot more. And leverage. you have a lot more grant leverage when you're partnering with yeah. the community foundation. So, yeah. so it it goes that. under kind of one organizational umbrella. Yeah. So th this brings up a thing that I have flogged in the past. The, the difference between prioritizing and sequencing. Um, 
you, if it's a if it's got a single umbrella, then you can start imposing almost a a logic on yeah. what comes first. What comes first? Sure. Yep. And and you have to. I mean, um, at the time, as a town, we were competing for. We we got a very nice chunk of change, but I had residents who, at the end of the year, would walk in and say, "Hey, I have to tax shelter this. I need to give this to a nonprofit." Yeah. So yeah. here, yeah. happy mm -hmm. happy happy town day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> build a fountain. <laughs> um, what, what but probably better choices would have been, and that was what kind of said to me was, we need people who want to if they want to donate ten grand. Yeah. It probably shouldn't come to the town. It probably should right. go to a community organization that could, that could then take it out. And the scholarships were covered and things like that. But but it did give us leverage to buy a uh, AME church and turn that into a community center and essentially which had really good acoustics and artists could perform there so really interesting interesting things the other do. thing it will allow us to do is pool the needs yep. and realize That's that we yeah. may have <clears throat> solutions in place already mm. yeah. or that there are needs that are common and all would participate in one solution well, one of one of the other things to be I guess I'd say from my history of watching this table uh, a sensitivity to the difference between change for change's sake and improvement of people, many people, and me, I mean, change is something you're leery of. Mm. Um, improvements to life as we know it is different than change to life as we know it. So there's a, but I don't know how you say it, I mean, you can well, say I'm struggling. Here's, here's, well, you, I think what you have to do is, and the head of the BRCRC said, you have to actually listen to what people want and need. We often yeah. come yeah. in and say, oh, you need this, yeah. and they need, may not yeah. need that. We actually have to know what the needs are. And I think that was the one thing about the forum that I was the most proud of was what a cross-section we did get from um, the community. Yeah, you don't, you and don't. that just from that one meeting, the bridges that were built into communities that we have not had bridges to in the past, who now are willing to say, here's what the fear is, here, you know, and they're telling me, this is why we don't do this. Yeah. This is why now we will, and you have to build that relationship up and listen to what people people need. People don't want change imposed on them. Yeah. Right, right. But, but the nice thing about this forum is that if we go down this community center mm -hmm. road, Hey, you bring it up at the forum. Say, hey, you know, this is something we're looking mm -hmm. very seriously at doing. Do you think this is a good way to move forward? Is a good way for, and you get buy-in from yeah. a large group of people yeah. who go out into the community and say, oh my God, guess what we're doing? This right, is and great. that's part of this whole. You know, I had somebody come in who was not happy that I'm even remotely thinking about. How could you? Even, how dare you even think about dealing with these things? These are social issues that don't belong in a municipality. And I said, oh. but from an economic standpoint, yeah. it has no, it has no value. And it took an hour and a half. But when he left my office, he said, "Well, you've given me a lot to think about." Which, mm -hmm. coming from this individual that it was, yeah. was huge. Yeah, yeah. was huge. Yeah. I, I, if you make Waldboro a better place to live. It's going to drive business in for everybody, mm -hmm. right? It's just going to. That's hey, just the right way. I coined that statement. What's that? I coined that statement. Oh. Make it a better place to live, yeah. and then yeah, work. It yeah. brings a. It to brings first a lot. you bring the business, right? To, and hope the people come here too is not the right way to put it. Right. Yeah. No, you have to do and it I've all. I've heard both at this table over the last eight nine years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, so. it's 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 going to be. You know, I got a little flack yesterday from a woman who, you know, is upset that I'm not putting a curb in front of her house yeah. quick enough. But she saw me at the Waldo Theater volunteering, and, well, why couldn't you put my curb in? I'm like, well, because they were two different things. But that theater being open is going to be huge. It's going to be Yeah, huge. that'll bring a lot of opportunity into the town, mm -hmm. lots of opportunity. And I will town. tell you, I met, the, I met one of the candidates for the position executive director position and I was impressed they're getting some good people. well they interviewed four they did yes yeah, so the update there is they interviewed four over the weekend yes. so that's that's huge I just uh, I, I'm I when when it's kind of the, the almost the heartbeat 
like churches are the heart. But well, it's kind a, of like the heartbeat of. Mm -hmm. It's a cultural. It's a cultural center. And, and, and you right. know, the truth is, if you look at the activities that are going around now, you know, galleries are opening. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's this artistic flavor. Mm. It's not taking over. I mean, obviously, we've still got the river and clamming and you know, you know that kind of work. But there is this artistic community yep. developing in Walter. But the artistic community is embracing the river too. I mean, right. if you look at what's happening at Broad Bay this weekend. Yeah, with the, the music on the Madame, with, for the Madamic. I mean, yeah. that's that's incredible. You know, yeah. I mean, if anybody, the only other thing that I think would be a home run for us, and if any of you have any pull with Harry Cabot, is if we could get the Cabot property next to Pine Street Landing back in play. He took it. It was on the market, or what? and he took it off. We had an agreement. We had an agreement. And he, and he, he took reneged. the agreement. If right. anybody has any mm. pull. Major. Because to me, if we could actually develop that, that would be huge for and us. And that would give us that whole stretch. Yep. Right. right. And, and then we could do the walk. The we could do the walk around the river. river. river you could walk along the shore, go across the bridge, and then somehow if we could manage to get all the way around to stores with a something, it would be incredible. Even now, that's an amazing walk to go down. To right, sport. but actually, with the boardwalk, <laughs> yeah, with so the, that you could actually make it a real, make it a yeah. true trail. And you could do little signed history signs mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. I and mean, you know, if you if awesome. that's, we could have our clam museum there. You could probably have your clam shack there. I was actually going to bring it up because Bill had to leave, so I was going to bring up the sets projects and everything. But oh, good. Henry Cabot's property was one of the things that we wanted to talk about for this project. Yeah. I mean, because that, to me, that, that, if we could get that done, too, I think that would be a huge... You know Who was his realtor? He did it himself. Oh, he did it himself. Yeah, there was no realtor. He made an offer. And it, and was the, a, it was a handshake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know why he changed was, his mind? Yeah. His wife decided that he could get more money, and she wanted it, so. Well, yes. supposedly they wanted it, but I don't think they're living there. I think it's rented now. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. Because the, the spiel at the time was that she wanted to, to live there. Right. Right. That was what the spiel right. was. Right, yeah, yeah. So <coughs> if anybody has any pool or any any way to, I, I just think that if we could acquire that, and because then you could have the pavilion. Mm -hmm. You know, that one area there is perfectly yeah. designed for an amphith uh, outdoor amphitheater where we could have music on the Madomic, you know. Would, would you sit uphill from it? And look down at it, or how? It, there's quite a hill there. Yeah, the amph the amphitheater. I don't know how exact. I think you would have to sit. They would be down, and you would sit yeah. on the hill looking down. Yeah. At them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, that hill is an asset if you can yeah. use it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's a yeah. detriment if you can't. I mean, and, and if you look in there, just that piece of property from there up to the bridge, some beautiful views off of there even though it's at the bridge I just know from taking pictures of Ealing at night mm -hmm. uh, there is some beautiful places there that are pretty cool mm -hmm. I love that idea I, I love, love that it. idea too yeah. those are those are my dreams that's a really <laughs> so I just have to solve all these things and that and we're good <laughs> and we're on our way we're on our way but but I but I think that's what this in my opinion and this is not anybody other than my opinion but I think that's what, if I need help with this, I need other people to think about this other than me, because this is what I keep rolling through my head. So you have to tell me if I'm crazy or not. Well, I think we start with a, a visit mm -hmm. uh, to Booth Bay, and if you guys could, uh, I'd love to do that. Maybe, um, maybe not next week though. Could we do it the week after yeah, next? Yeah, I can ask. Katie's great, you'll love them. Their offices are down at the hospital in Booth Bay. Which is an interesting place for them to have their office, too. I mean, it's tied in. It is tied in. Yeah. I just think of all the, the uh, different groups that could take advantage of that, a building mm -hmm. like that. It's awesome. And I love that idea about haircuts. And, you know, you, you, make, you don't make, there's no stigma attached. It's there's, everybody's getting the exact. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. And that was the thing, too, that the BRCRC brought up to us about the food backpack program. You're right. 
our backpack people are thinking, oh, we're, we're fighting poverty. Our backpacks are less. But what they're not realizing is there's a stigma that goes with right. receiving that backpack. <clears throat> right. So when the BRCRC figured it out, mm -hmm. they started delivering to the houses. And then it went up. It shot up because then people, there was no stigma. Was no, right. So then you got a true sense of who was in need. And in mm -hmm. there, what they do is they work with Hannaford. I mean, they have a true network, and we could have the same network. Why not? And yeah. they provide even coolers in the summer, but they give a recipe. So every week yeah. there's a recipe given so that even the kids can make the meals if the parents, for some reason, can't. Like simple, kind of simple stuff. Right. Yeah. Healthy, simple stuff. Um, um, well. Ten, eight years ago, there was a discussion with Lincoln County Help yeah. that they were thinking they would like to have a, I'm not sure what the category was, in, but a, a medical facility in Waldenboro on Route 1 uh, that would replace the, the kind of the long building that's over by the fields. I don't know who owns the long buildings over by the fields, but... Someone down in Florida. <laughs> they used to live here. The, uh, but, but in terms of a community center, um, is, the, is there a possibility that that building becomes uh, a community Not that building, but a different building. On that spot? Up, back further but on But what's wrong property. with that, I, I'll just say, if that building were... Um... They would like a new building. Okay. All right. It, it just seemed... Uh, well, you because you have to realize they're now main health, so they have two buildings in Walderboro. Oh, because they've combined. That should That's be right. yeah. one. Right. Okay. All right. Good. It gets complicating. Yeah. Uh, John, update. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, I made a quick list to make it quick. So. Good. Um, let's see. Uh, first of all, we've had some initiatives to try and fill in pockets in this town. Well, then the main one was the uh, not a really a pocket of unserved, but a an area that was neglected by Spectrum's franchise agreement to provide service to a road that met the criteria, which is over nine homes per mile. And that went round and round as we circled, as I circled my wagons and got in trouble, and so we turned it over to uh, a higher level of contact from our town who tried to soften my blow <laughs> on them. Good cop, bad cop, John. <laughs> and we're still trying to get them to go conform to uh, the, the agreement. Do we need more bad cops or more good cops? I think right now, I actually think that we've got them. I, I, I maybe I'm the only one that read that email, but I think no, I, I, I think I, they I, have acknowledged that they have to do it. They the way they did that, by the way, in more detail, so they can amplify that point. If they said they're doing make ready on poles, they're committed. Right. They are. And I hadn't heard that until the, the, you, uh, that it's the note. Timeline, yeah. It's the timeline for right. that that upsets me. Right. It shouldn't take six months to do that. Well, well, it shouldn't, but it's CMP and it's the, I get that. So, I mean, I do think. They have a new pr process that was voted in last year to make that streamline. It was a big deal in the state right. a year ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called Make Ready on, uh, on public utility polls. And I think she's a little gun shy just from conversations of promising anything to us because <laughs> then. <laughs> they look bad. Yeah. Right, so I think she's a little, I think she's a little... Well, they don't nervous. need to worry about looking bad in Baltimore. They, all you have to do is go around Maine. Yeah, I just don't, spectrum, but I... And they're I, full of examples of this, everywhere. I know, and she's got connections to Waldboro <laughs> through her family, so I, I try to be very understanding of... In the greater scheme of things, the ROI for Spectrum in Maine has got to compare terribly with the ROI everywhere else in this country where they operate. Well, I'm not so sure. So this has to that. probably sit very, very low on their well, it's, priority list. This is now charter up here. It's no longer Spectrum as Spectrum. It's Charter Spectrum. Charter is a huge corporation. That's They're in point. trouble in New York so bad that the governor told them to get out hmm. and sell their business to someone who will take care of us. And it was over issues like this that we're experiencing, it's a culture thing. It's a business culture issue. They don't want to disclose to help the towns understand so they can plan. And uh, we have a, one last area that's eligible, possibly two if Max is correct on his analysis on 
Filer. uh, Filer's Corner, which is borderline because of the number of homes within that area. But that connects right to Chapel, by the way. And so that, that we need to get Chapel done as with the franchise, if we have a franchise. Mm -hmm. and, and we were promised that. And I gave you a summary of what, how it's evolved. And, and I didn't know that uh, they had already had a commitment that they were going ahead on the make ready until you told me so in your note. Thank you. You're welcome. But that has to be played to the people on that road because they are well, feeling tried, very. But to we, get, Max has tried to explain that as of yeah. last week, uh, or this week, Wednesday. Yeah. He was on the phone with Robin, and I, I think that, I, I, yeah, I don't know where she gets her. I, I understand the angst. She also suggested that maybe we null and void the, the. See the point. Agreement. The agreement. There's no point for that. And and honestly, if they want to, if the money, like she suggested, we use that money to, that's got to be voted on by the voters. Um, well, so well, I think I, we, we just need. What to I'd stay like to course. suggest is we call that Plan B and to not talk about it until we need to. Yeah. Because we need to try and keep going on a straight and narrow to get this done. Yeah, I think. Because so. there is no grant money available till next year. Now again. So, yeah, I, that apparently. So there needs through. to be a strategy understood, but I don't know if it's. We I think do we it have to way. keep asking her in a nice way what the progress is, but I think it will get done. It just may not get done as fast as we want it to. So there's an email out there that we need to respond to. And that is regarding. I think she sent it to me, didn't she? She sent it to you. Yes, yes so that's I right. Need to, so that gave you I will, the framework. I'm going to draft a response to that and right. circulate it before I send it out. Okay. Excellent. So very good. So then, then so that's that. So we're moving ahead on that one, and we get that done, and that includes some people on Union Road who were left out before. Uh, the next subject is um, the uh, LCI attempt to do a different format for a grant, which included the uh, the residents that would be served to participate in funding it, in order to make it happen. Right. And we went out in the two communities where these little pockets exist of, say, five homes within a short distance of each other. However, Storm Mountain Road is five homes within a mile of each other. And the they couldn't get the traction from the people because of the uh, impact on them. And I think it's also a situation where, since we've given everybody the service in this town for without them having to participate up till now, well, First blush, why do we, right? <laughs> it's a different location. Yeah, that's it's right. So where do we draw the line is we're, we're between someone who lives <clears throat> in a very isolated, insulated environment by themselves and where, where we don't try and, and we, the, the uh, comprehensive plan says we're going to try and get connectivity to everybody in this town, right? Isn't that correct? I don't remember the exact words. Do you, Max? Activity? I thought we wanted, we used the word broadband, but yep. we really meant the word fiber. Right. Yeah. And right. that's the way I took it. So the, the goal is to have right. fiber. See, now, every now if Spectrum were sitting here, they would disagree with yeah, you. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. But, uh, right. The, the so we have to be sort of open minded clear. a little bit about that wording. Yeah. And uh, I didn't drill down on it at the time it was published because, or it was, the draft was running around, because we're going to have a, a, a hybrid system in this town until such time is down the road that we can afford to get funding to put dark fiber throughout the whole town that anybody can use the fibers on depend mm. and it isn't all uh, provider dependent yeah it's i know leased. because i'm i live under the dark fiber literally out my front door and there's no way i can get it that's right and that's remember what you remember my, my since it was put in you remember when, it, when they were running? Ten years more. Remember when they were running dark fiber to the libraries and the schools? Yeah. And I yeah. said, why can't these? We get the state to allow people. They wouldn't let us. Right. They Same wouldn't thing. let us. The law said we could right. not. That hook was in. five years ago, right? When this library got their fiber. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah at so least five. That yeah. that's down the road. So that's within the uh, TIF potential down the road, maybe. It is. But it getting be, back yeah. to the getting back to the heart of this. The, uh, the remaining uh, uh, issue is next year, uh, we have to figure out a way to come up with another type of grant for filling in pockets. 
and by then that I have the, I'll have the advantage of other towns of uh, having filled out their bulk of their town like we did, and they will be left with pockets too. So we'll have a more receptive audience to hearing mm -hmm. about special grants for small pockets. Yeah. Right. Right. Bye bye. Yeah. Take your, your jacket. Your jacket. Yeah. Don't forget that. I have to run too because sure. I've got a, that library bookstore. Yeah. One more stuff. So anyway, that's the remaining. Sorry. Um, issue and the other part of it is um, the state bond got turned down in a late night vote last not last night the night before last for broadband for broadband wow and but it was coupled with another part of DECD it wasn't just a standalone broadband now they, there bond. was a whole bunch of stuff that went down and it went down they were out there all night and the Republicans stood their ground I hear I've only gotten first glance, first glance at this, and they voted it down. And I don't know why. I'm interested to know why they voted that down because I think it's a it's a means that we don't have any extra money coming into the program to finish this town up, which would have made it more. It flexible. included a whole bunch of stuff. I think they were all attachments, and it just became a oh the amendments it when they add an amendments. It was too complicated, and it didn't have enough detail about each individual. Mm -hmm activity because I went looking to read about the uh, broadband part of it and it was too broad in my opinion maybe that's why I'm guessing though so I'm not well when I people, think there was too many attachments when they start putting that amendments. stuff on yeah. that you know that's one strategy to get a bill right and I voted it against. went soundly down yeah so, so it this did, was it, a hunt, this was the 120 million dollar bond mm -hmm. yeah. they get and actually, evidently, it wasn't the, the divide on the vote wasn't. It, it finally, the Republicans had some kind of a get together at 3 a.m. or something, and the, when they did that, they got enough collected votes to put them over the top of blocking it, so mm -hmm. that it didn't go through. So anyway, that's too bad. So the other thing that's so I don't think there's any extra money for the Connect Me Fund unless unless it's brought in the back door by uh, DECD from some other uh, possibility. And the governor of the state that we have now has been um, uh, known to do some, some shuffling of money around like that, wherever she can. So we'll see what happens. So I'm not counting on anything more than, what, seven or 800,000 this next year? Out of the grant that will be awarded next month? The round, well, the round, this current round, it was about 750. Right, that's what I'm talking about. So I don't know if they'll try and aim for that same number or if they're going to try and be a bit more conservative next so, year, depending on what the applications were this time. So wait, to, I'm waiting to see what happens with Chapel, just to make sure we got that one done before I uh, have any further thoughts. Plus, we'll have a better visual, vision of what to do about these other two remaining little pockets, which would be LCI related, most likely because they're right near existing LCI cable. And it's fiber, so we should, we should be promoting fiber wherever we, that there's no strong option towards cable under the franchise agreement because they have to run too far to get there. Okay, so the other, other thing we have to mention here tonight, and I haven't brought up with you yet, Max, other than briefly is my phone was, you know, we, I had to get off the phone, yeah. but AT&T is moving into this area in a big way. Are they putting up new towers for cell phones? Well, we haven't heard exactly how with their longer term. Because their short, short coverage term, Their short-term plan is to get on the existing towers with oh. permits to go on existing towers. So they did submit a permit very recently to install three new antennas up the tower on Atlantic Highway here. Right. Which which one? The one that's on the, right over there by Nobleboro? Oh, no, that's not in Waldeboro. That's in Nobleboro. The, the only cell phone tower that's on Atlantic Highway, once you get at the top of the hill. Well, with this way, there's one there. No, no, yeah. no it's a Damerscott. Okay, that's all right. The one that's next to LCI, across the street. No, there's one here no. up the top of the hill. Oh. Once you pass the um, okay, I know the old it crematorium, yep. and yep. then there's that cell tower to your right. Yeah, so, so why does this matter? First of all, the reason why they're here is for FirstNet, which is a public safety first responder network that the state opted in for. That has nothing to do with the town except our public safety system will be enhanced if we choose to uh, elect using it because you have to pay to use it. The town has to budget it in. 
it's an additional expense. It isn't just buried in the in the uh, connectivity, or it may come through the county. I'm not yeah, sure. that's something that they're dealing with at the county level. Yeah. Okay. So what they do, we follow. Yeah. So the but in there, they're also trying to embed cellular connectivity for regular cell phones for four G. It's like four G LTE. Yeah. And that's a problem. Well, I don't know. All I know is that people who have AT&T phones have a hard time in Waterboro. Right. That's why yes. they don't have the connectivity yet. Mm. I got just, rid of mine. I yeah, right. I would never use that because So the, that. the other part of AT&T is that uh, they are tr trying to move into the state, and who knows what they might do with, with uh, U.S. Cellular, who is financially debatable. Hmm. So, um, and are, you, are most of you are aware that I've had major disconnects on my U.S. Cellular over the last six months? People have complained on Facebook about problems with U.S. Cellular and I, connectivity. And I, and I figured, and they told, and I fought them about it because I kept getting disconnects. And the reason why I'm telling everybody this is because they told me when I got to the higher level technical people that I had interference from one of my neighbors, which was preventing my cell phone from connecting at my house. How can and that, that they had sent a letter to the neighbor to to ask him uh, to correct his problem, and I said, "Well, can I get a copy of who this neighbor is?" Oh no, we don't we don't <laughs> give that out. Well, anyway, so I thought about this further, and I said, "Who could it be?" You know, there's nothing going on here. Plus, I have ways to measure what's going on in my area signal-wise, and there was nothing. So I thought harder and. I noticed that most of my disconnects is when I talked to, we're talking to people in this area and I got a f signal fade on my US cellular and I was talking to somebody on um, Verizon, Verizon cell phones. Really? All the time. So when the LC, uh, US cellular upgraded their system to 4G LTE, they lost connectivity distance from their towers so that I was switching through the roaming agreement with uh, Verizon over to the to another tower. And when those switches took place, it didn't get connected. And that's when I dropped calls yeah. all the time. Drop calls, drop calls, and not just me. So then what they did, they sent me one of those boosters to put in my house. Oh, uh, that's always a solution. And But the trouble is you have to have it, an antenna outside. It's mm -hmm. always pointing towards one tower. Yep. And it costs $500. So I opt I got one, checked it out, and found out I had to be within so many feet because it repeats in your house. Oh my gosh. Doesn't work. So I gave it back to him and I switched to Verizon. Yeah. And I got my Marsha's phone switched to Verizon. Apple gave her a phone because their hers was one of the early US cellular Apple phones that was not uh, SIM switchable. So now we have Verizon and I've had no disconnects. Mm. That's good. Yeah, for two weeks. But I'm tell you saying that because I know it's a broader problem than just me in this area. And some people who aren't sophisticated enough to understand that. Yeah, the switching handoff with would, would just roaming say, oh, I lost a call and, yeah. and leave it at that. Right. It's just click like that. And so if you if, it, if someone says you're fading out, I'm not hearing it, all of a sudden you click off. When, when you're handed off, you're being handed off to a uh, a, a, an incorrectly s connected uh, network yep. around here for roaming. That's right. so. Beware of that. Yep. And uh, John, uh, anything else? No, nope, and that was it. All right, thank you. Uh, renewables. So we're we've absorbed the renewables yep. subcommittee. Um, the, I just want to make sure I've I've got everything covered that the subcommittee had been working on. But the only things that I have that are kind of active projects right now. Um, uh, except for the dance, but which you have another, right. is the LED street LED lights. street lights, which is Max is working with. And and at some point, LED lights here. Here and the HVAC. Right. right. And I've never here, seen. Where is the other place? HVAC. In the town office. Oh, okay. All over. And, oh, well, well, here, specifically. Yeah. But I've never seen any of the quotes that were obtained from anybody. So if anybody has access to those, those and, and what kind of were we doing like heat pumps and stuff? What, what kind of I don't know what we were doing. That was going to be the recommendation. That was what was supposed to be the recommendation the from okay. the committee. So why don't we start anew on that? You can. 
So we'll start anew on the town office in terms of making it energy efficient. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. And the 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 transfer station, the uh, committee is re gathering the transfer station committee is regathering they're accepting applications yep all right and um and is any updates on this on max any updates on the street lights um yes so i was able to finally contact cmp uh, what we need right now is a net book value for all of our street lights to know how much it would cost to purchase the poles. Um, I contacted CMP and they said, like the next day they sent me a paper that I then showed to Julie. Which was converting street lights. Which was converting street they lights. Did it. Uh, I then asked, all right, that's nice, but one option we were looking at was purchasing them and then having a third party turn them into LED and they said, oh, okay, well that will take two weeks. Okay. It's a bit suspicious on that timing, <laughs> but okay. Um, so we won't be able to have uh, an idea of... So the idea is to, if you purchase the pole, the whole pole, is that what I'm... Yeah, going? it would be purchasing the whole pole and then having a third party person, like real term, come in to switch okay, out so the these lights. poles also have other uh, utilities on there, passing, using them to continue on? They're not standalone for lighting, are they? Because are they, are they? some of them have the electrical from CMP plus yeah. telephone and everything yeah. else on there. Yeah, but so right if, now, you if you purchase them, what happens to the town relative to the ownership of that? With the uh, We stop paying the rent on it. We stop paying the lease. No, well, we, no. about all the other things that the are other, attached. The oh. other. Those are, uh, those are. The spectrum or those the are agreements. There's a lot of other things attached to street. So you, that may get you all involved in that situation. I assumed you were just buying the street just the light, not, That's not what everything I thought. attached to the pole. That's what it had been, I thought. I mean, you're not, like, like if... You're if, not buying the pole, so if the pole was damaged, we're not putting the pole back up. Just yeah, the that's, light. that's a good question. Car crashes into a pole, knocks it down. Whose problem is it? I asked, I was just asking for the net book value from CMP for this, because that's the direction I thought we were going with real term. I, See, you're, we're paying them a lease fee right. for, the, for the lamp, right? Just the yeah, lamp. Right. right. That's what we're so getting we're So we want to buy, right. we wanna buy that Fixture. real estate, that little piece of real estate on the pole. Right, we're not buying the pole. We're not buying the, the pole. Well, that's what I want to clarify. Here. I think that's a good thing to clarify. But when you will, met with... And I will clarify that with, CM, with the person I talked with from CMP, but they said that converting is one of two options. Either CMP just does it, or you're buying the pole. It, the pole. So I will, I will double check to make sure that. That's sure, it isn't. There isn't a, an option called leasing the space on the pole for the light. That's what we're doing now. Yeah, that's what I we, thought we were going we to continue pay, to do. No, but we don't want to. What we're do, what we want to do is stop paying that rent. Oh, I see. And, okay. And then put our own LED lights in. So we're, not only do we not not have to pay the rent on the pole, we also uh, reduce our energy consumption. So I know about the energy. I know about the, the energy consumption, yeah. but yes. I didn't know about. They the should know about business. this. Yeah. Th that's what they told them to get was the net value of the pole. Yep. Of the whole pole. I, they just said the net book value of the street lights, and I said the same thing to CMP. Street lights or pole? I said street lights. Can He'll you figure, figure it out. Can right. you just get a get the definition and of what net net the net value, what's that mean? And with other towns <laughs> and with other towns doing this, yeah, you would think they would CMP know. CMP would know what you we're, would think. We're yeah. asking. And no way CMP is gonna give you their power lines connected to right. they're not gonna give that to you. you Neither can't is buy the phone that. company. What's that? Neither is co consolidated right. with no. the phone I, lines. Right, I think figure, all, you'll figure it out. All that stays and Max will figure it out. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, any new business? Except what you threw on the... I threw bus. everything at you, you in the kitchen it? sink. I'm sorry, but it's exciting stuff. Uh, so um, s sometime between now and our next meeting, we'll have a visit mm -hmm. over uh, to uh, Booth Bay to see how they Do have this little community center thing working. And uh, I'm excited about that. I think I've... So, so uh, I had a question for Max about work and Julie on the uh, lights. The, the lights, we hadn't, I hadn't quite... Had, had a chance to finish that question. Uh, we were ready to entertain uh, a final 
format so that we can decide whether we like their bid or are we at a point where we're still trying to figure out what we want to ask them to do a best and final bid on it? That is a we, question. We, well, we need to know what money we're talking about because it got more expensive than what right. the select board That's why I want to know. Because it, it's actually not on this meeting because we're not sure we'll have a, any. Uh, yeah, we only it's have. It's on the next meeting. Yeah, we only have what's. We only have the numbers for CMP converting the lights themselves. So the reason why I ask is I'd heard and made a note that we had a deadline because you wanted to get it into this year, this done, this project, and uh, lead times and. No, so we're fine with whatever. It comes out to be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't done. have to be done. And, uh, you know, this is a budget reason, but no, it's, just, it's a money saving endeavor. So it's because before we you decide what I have all requested is that we do a field trip to down to free, uh, South Portland and Freeport, maybe in one trip to visit with the person their reference. The, this company has references because I want to ask them questions about their connectivity to those lights or management of them. Oh, with, the, with the upgrades, the technology upgrades. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important detail because um, some, depending upon how they are doing it there and what their experience is, will, will make, make me either more or less comfortable with the way they're proposing it being done, the being the provider. Yeah, I would definitely go see them. I have no problem. And then, as far as this, the, uh, are the, they the closest that has? Yeah. This, yeah. The LCI, um, not the LCI, we have to have connectivity to LCI, fiber perhaps, I think, but I don't know that yet, in order to have any consideration for hotspots in the future on the light fixture, embedded in the light itself for um, any uh, connectivity to the internet for visitors, which is an option we want to be able to include without necessarily go ahead with it now but just make sure we're configuring so they don't have to go back and redo the whole thing mm. when yes. the time comes mm. yeah. Yeah. real term said that for that we don't have to give a definitive answer now it's something that could be added on later but i, I want to but be we more need to consider about that detail yes, thank you but i'm saying yeah. it doesn't have to be part yeah. of the upfront cost it can just be we need to make sure that that option's available and the way it's available is important to me because if you have yep. to have a, a bucket truck go out there three or four times to make changes uh, per day, per hour for these changes, that's one not so good. If you can have everything embedded so you just go there once, that's yep. what the idea Obviously, is. Obviously, once Max gets all the details, we're, we're, we're going to want to review yep. that. Right. Right. Uh, my, one quick thing I wanted to say was uh, Bill had to leave, but for the TIF SEDS, thing going on in town so while we're working on the TIF and we won't know how much money we'll start getting until next April we can start planning the uh, the SEDS project the big economic development assistance grant program that which we, one of the SEDS uh, that we put in well the ones that we and John was at the meeting so he can talk about he can test to what we have right now it's the same two projects that we've been going back and forth on there's the route one village yep. corridor corridor right. project and then there's the the sewer to the industrial park those were the two favorites i would say in this group uh i think with what julie's been talking about i think the the corridor project is the one that still is probably more favorable one let me just throw this out there is it possible that the if the community center we're talking about is a for-profit uh, uh, building, can that um, fall into that category? Uh, it could. I think with just what Lincoln, I, Main Health, or Lincoln Health, whatever we're saying, uh, and all the other renting factors that Julie was talking about, that could also possibly tie into it as well. So we, we should think about that. Yes. So. It, I mean, this is a project, if we're able to get this going, you know, the uh, community building going faster than the EA project, then we could do that. Uh, but this is something still a few years down the line. I'm right now just doing a grant for um, the Main Street sidewalk that mm -hmm. you, John, and I talked about a lot earlier. 
that one we wouldn't see that money until maybe three years later, which is probably around the time we get all this sort of lined up to go. Well, how, when, when do you think? What what's the timeline, Julie? For we're not in the forum anymore. We're not in the forum. Do you want no. me to? Yeah. Can you just go? Yeah. Do you want me to adjourn the meeting and then yeah. just have a yeah sure so a meeting, meeting adjourned? That's all I want because we say. we don't have a quorum, so yeah. we're kind of just which is having a chit chat. We're chitting. Why, why isn't Indy Gray the perfect building for this?